Hello everyone. In this video, we will learn about the Trade Facilitation Agreement of WTO that is TFA. Okay, you learned in another video about the Peace Clause. Basically, the, um, we got the Indefinite Peace Clause which got us immunity from future disputes which cleared the way towards TFA. So basically, India was using TFA as a bargaining chip for getting the Indefinite Peace Clause which we did get. So in return, we are willing to now sign the TFA, which is a very major agreement of WTO. The Bali package of December 2013 had certain, you know, basic agendas. First was, it was aimed at lowering trade barriers. It forms part of the Doha development agenda. And this is the first agreement which will be approved by all members. So after WTO having come into uh, place, there is not, not even a single agreement which is approved by all members of WTO. So this is going to be the first one. Okay, about the discussions at the Bali summit. First of all, uh, this is very important actually. First of all, trade facilitation is something as you can imagine intuitively that everybody would want to have. You know, why would anybody want extra, you know, problems at the border or any, any issues uh, during the transit of the goods? So everybody, all countries of the world are, want trade facilitation. So what is the problem? What is the bone of contention? First of all, this agreement talks about legally binding commitments. So if a country gets, you know, agrees to legally binding commitments, it will have no say left in implementing that. So this is a very strong clause. So this is the first point of contention in the TFA. Secondly, it requires expenses. Because if you want to, let us say, smoothen out your customs operations, you might have to put in certain systems in place. You might have to, uh, you know, let us say, integrate all your ports. So there could be certain things which would require expenses. Again, which is a bone of contention because some of the developing countries may say that, well, the developed country should help us out in ironing out these issues and in getting these expenses paid. The third issue is technology requirement. Again, like the example that I gave, let us say to facilitate trade, we need to link all the custom centers or we need to link all the ports uh, by IT systems. Now, that is a technology which maybe the developed countries already have because uh, they are technologically more advanced, let's say. So the developing countries would want to get that technology transferred directly to them instead of, you know, reinventing the wheel again and also incurring the expense, expenditure in the process. So the developing countries want technology transfer also. So these are the basic issues in the TFA. So um, what all was already there as far as tra trade facilitation is concerned and what was missing? The Articles 5, 8 and 10 of GATT dealt with freedom of transit of goods, fees and formalities connected with importing and exporting, and publication and administration of trade regulations. So these things were already ironed out and these things have already are already existing. What was missing in GATT and other agreements was that it lacked specific provisions in some areas, particularly on customs procedures. So again in customs procedures, various countries had various standards. And in some countries, the custom procedures were more cumbersome than in the others. So this was an issue which remained outstanding. The second issue was documentation. Again, some countries require a lot of documentation, which in effect became a deterrent for the countries trading with those countries. So this is another thing which was, you know, not ironed out. And the third was transparency. A lot of, in a lot of countries, uh, the, you know, uh, across the border trade or any sort of import and export is also associated with a lo lot of lack of transparency. So there should be certain regulations which ensure transparency in these procedures. So this is the basic framework of trade facilitation. Okay, just to summarize again, um, trade facilitation agreement is the first multilateral agreement in the WTO history. It aims at simplifying custom procedures, increasing transparency and reducing transaction costs. It tries to remove stumbling blocks in international trade. And uh, what is it going to achieve? So this is a means to an end. The end is it is expected to deliver over time an additional US dollar 1 trillion to the world economy. So you can, as you can see, the, the world economy was losing is losing approximately dollar one trillion in things like you know cumbersome procedures and lack of transparency and transaction costs. So this was supposed to iron this out. And the last point is that it is expected to generate 21 million jobs 
out of which 18 million are expected to be in developing countries because developing countries you know once trade facilitation happens and they are able to facilitate uh, you know iron out the procedures at their end they will be able to export better which would create more jobs with the three parts of the tfa the first part deals with the provisions so uh, like provisions for expediting the movement release and clearance of goods and including goods in transit so the first point is when the goods are moving across borders uh, because of custom procedures a lot of time the goods sit at the border or at the ports for a very long time so there are provisions for you know uh, expediting which means um, you know lowering the time of this movement and also related to release and clearance of goods okay secondly we have sdt sdt stands for um, special and differentiated treatments for the ldcs which means that while the provisions will be there for everyone but, the, but you cannot treat unequals equally so if a country is developing you need to make some provisions so that it can be able to cope up with these provisions so the sdt provisions allow the developing countries and ldcs to determine when they will be implementing the individual provisions so while the provisions will be the same but the ldcs are given certain flexibility in terms of when they will be implementing the provisions also they can identify provisions that they will only be able to implement upon the receipt of technical assistance and support for capacity building uh, this goes back to the initial slide where where i said this is very important because in certain things the countries would require technical assistance and capacity building so the sdt provisions will say okay till you do not get those things till you do not get the technical assistance or capacity building from the developed countries you can you know uh, delay the implementation of certain provisions so this was supposed to identify those particular provisions the third part is that a permanent committee on trade facilitation was to be set up so establishing a permanent committee on trade facilitation at the wto and this would require the members to have a national committee to facilitate domestic coordination and implementation of the provisions of the agreement so while the trade facilitation is an agreement it will be accompanied by a permanent committee on trade facilitation so that that can coordinate with the domestic uh, you know uh, implementing agencies so that the provisions of the agreement are implemented okay this is just basically obviously if we have the tfa in place it will lower transaction costs there will be greater market access in countries with stringent custom rules and regulations and also smes benefit as they can spend more on marketing rather than non non productive paperwork so you know what happens these uh, right now is it because the custom procedures across the world are very cumbersome a lot of paperwork is uh, done and a lot of time money energy resources of all the companies are wasted in this now as far as the bigger companies are concerned they can have an entire cell de devoted to these kind of uh, formalities also they do have the money power or the muscle power or the political power to get their work done quicker so they can cut the queue and get their work done but these are benefits that do not accrue to the smes so they are the ones who get stuck and they are unable to export as much as they would be able to if these procedures are simplified so the most important beneficiary of uh, the trade facilitation agreement would be smes so all in all you can see that it is a very good thing if it comes into place it will help all the countries of the world especially the smaller companies the only slight negative as far as india is concerned is that we will be losing a bargaining power uh, when a permanent solution for the food issue comes up although we've got this much um, you know leeway which says that till a permanent solution of food issue is found found we have they have the world has extended the peace clause but if later there is a rethink on this issue and uh, let us say some western countries start to arm twist india by the time we would have already signed the tfa and we will not be having that bargaining chip but this is not too much of a negative because with the growing, growing clout of um, india i am sure that we can get the other countries to come around to our point of view without having to throw in a bargaining chip so overall i think it is it is good that if the world can agree on the provisions of tfa and trade facilitation agreement can be signed thank you for watching the video
होप यू लाइक इट कॉमेंट्स एंड सजेशन आर वेलकम थैंक यू